Hey everybody. Um, I've been waiting on one of these rocks of bananas to ripen so we could do this, like the comprehensive video. This is all about bananas. Answer all the questions I see all the time because there's seems to be so much confusion with these plants and I, I'm not sure why with bananas for whatever reason. Um, I'm always seeing people saying I didn't get fruit or we got fruit and then they never ripened or they turned black and rotted away. There's, I see it so often and most often I see, I, you know, the fruit came out and then we cut them off and hung them on the deck and then they rotted away and turned to nothing. Um, I'm not sure why this is uh, kind of accepted is that you just cut bananas off and, and hang them. I don't know who, who started that, but it's like with any other fruit, they're, they pop out, they pollinate, you know, bananas don't really pollinate, they're self fruitful, but um, the fruit appears on any other plant and you wait until it grows ripens gets big and nice starts to turn color then you know it's ripe and then you pick it for whatever reason people don't do that with bananas they just pull them whenever they feel like it or oh they're rounding or something like that and they say oh that, that's when you pull them it's just like with any other fruit you pull them when they're ripe you pull them when they turn colors um there is these were uh, half green yesterday. Right now there's one green one left. Um, I did leave the flower on. I did an experiment a couple of years ago. I had um, two flowers come out of the same clump and they were like right next to each other. They came out within two days of each other. So I just let them go. And as soon as the fruits have produced and I got that flower away from the rack a little bit, I cut the flower off of one and I left the other. Um, just to see, how do they finish? Do they ripen faster? What, you know, what's the story? And in the end, the one that I left the flower on, the fruit looked better. They were more even, they ripened more evenly. The one that I cut the flower off, they just didn't quite perform the same. So uh, I left them. In fact, this season, I didn't do anything to any of my banana trees. I left them alone completely. I didn't trim leaves. Uh, I didn't do anything. Uh, really just because we got too busy. Um, I have gone through in the process before of just trimming and trimming and trimming and keeping them to five to seven leaves when they're young and then letting them fill out to 10 or 12 when they're close to fruiting. Um, and you know they're close to fruiting. As you grow a little more and get to know your varieties, you can kind of tell by the thickness and the size of the plants. But bananas produce 44 leaves and then they will produce a flower. Some produce 43, some produce 45, it's not exact. But for the most part, you can rely on the 44 leaf rule. So when you get to 44 leaves, you get your flower. And here's where it gets tricky, and this is where a lot of people don't finish their fruit. If we get to, say, 42 leaves, 43 leaves, and then it gets cold, and we freeze off, and the leaves all turn brown in the wintertime, now springtime comes along. You know, the stalks are fine, but springtime comes, and now that plant only has one leaf left in its pocket. And that's it. It only has the ability to throw one more leaf. So it pops this one leaf and then it has a flower. And now it only has one leaf, that's like one solar panel, giving it the ability to collect up nutrients, to collect the sun, to do its thing and fill those fruits out. The, clo the best we've done so far, I believe that, uh, three or four leaves on that praying hands over there, but the leaves are big. So we were able to fill, finish those out. Uh, I, I think there's three leaves on that plant and those fruits are days away from being harvested. They're huge, they look really good. So three leaves is like the very, very bare minimum that I've been able to pull it off with. Two never works, the fruit just rot. They, they can't fill out and they just turn black and die. Um, so we do this uh, prop, we've put the video up a lot of times, uh, the Reynolds prop that Jay taught me how to do, Jay Reynolds down in Bokelia with bamboo. Um, so here is the final stage. Uh, this went through the hurricane. Hurricane Ian tried and did not win. We have a lot of fruit still hanging. Um, everywhere where I had these props work, but you can see I take the weight off and immediately they start coming towards me. So here is the other fun part. See a lot of times people saying that they have to get a ladder out to take down their fruit and they don't want to do that. So, this one happens to be pretty low. So, come over here, camera lady. This is all I need, a little bitty knife. So, they're falling this way. I don't want these smashing on the ground, obviously. So what I do is I just go right in here. You can do this on a huge tree, 
I do it with the praying hands that are 30 feet tall and it works fine. Treat it just like an oak tree. Take out a wedge out of the front. Doesn't have to be a lot. Just a little. Just weaken the stalk. Right? A little three, four inch knife, that's all I need. And now I'm just gonna put my hand up top here and give it one little swipe back here. That's it. Put the knife away and I allow this, you know, just kind of help it. And it lowers down right onto my shoulder. It's not holding a lot of weight. And then I just take my knife out again and remove my fruit. And there's my fruit. Um, bananas grow up, plantains grow down. That's one way to tell the difference between them. So when I hang these, I will hang them like that. It will take a lot of the pressure off of them and they'll be able to hang on a little bit longer. If you hang them the other way, they tend to, when they super ripen and get real dark, they tend to crack right here and they'll start falling off the rack. But this way they seem to hold on a little better. Um, those are really nice. This is Orinoco. In case anyone's wondering about the variety, um, very nice banana. They, uh, you'll see this crackle to the skin when they're super ripe and ready to go. That's about a perfect banana. Texture is right. Um, you can pull them when they're green and use them as uh, like to make tostones or any kind of green bananas, mashed bananas, treat them like a vegetable. Um, but there's a lot of use here to these Orinocos. I've found them to be really cold hardy. I've found them to be just strong. They seem to stand up pretty well on their own. Uh, just it's been a real reliable variety for us. That's majority of what we grow here. There's another big giant rack right behind you up there hanging that's propped. That one looks really good. Another few weeks and we'll have fruit there. Um, what else did I not cover? Uh, as far as growing them and getting them to this point, uh, if they're planted in beach sand, which is a majority of Florida, they're probably not going to do very well. They're very heavy feeders. They like a lot of nitrogen, but they like even more potassium. That is the main source. That, that's the main nutrient that we use. We use ash. Every one of our bananas gets ash. Uh, what we do, we have a burn pit because you can, if you look around here, you can see all the oaks and all this wood and we constantly have uh, wood falling and we're always doing wintertime fires. So as we have these fires, we collect up all our ash and we put them in buckets and we just stash them. And then in the springtime, when it's time to get to it, we'll take the ash, put it on the golf cart, run around the property and put a big old scoop of ash on every single banana plant, every clump, every one we have. And we have got uh, more than I can count. Um, but that's our main source of nutrient that we put on there. Then we'll throw some rabbit manure on them. Um, and then a lot of mulch. And that's it. That's all we do. That's all I've ever done. I've, I have not done any other, nothing special, no granular fertilizer. We don't use it anywhere on the property. Um, but that's the secret. The secret is a lot of organic material. Um, and definitely getting that potassium in there. They like that potassium. So uh, when I'm done now, let me set these bananas here. The next part of the game is take it down. Take this whole stalk down. Because that will not fruit again. This one takes over. That's the next, right out of this same clump. I've got about five right here. Um, I'll remove some. Uh, there is a good chance I will not eat these fruits when this plant fruits because this is going to be one of those ones that gets stuck in that winter that winter month time where it probably will freeze off the leaves um, if generally if i see a flower in uh, october november december january we're never going to see that fruit we're never going to finish that fruit so uh it may be even more beneficial for me to just take this tree down completely because that will be the next flower um but i don't know i haven't decided yet we'll see what the winter brings but as soon as we see burned off leaves and I have plants that are really close, they get taken down. Because that's just disappointment waiting to happen. Because um, you're going to see them and you'll waste a bunch of energy and nutrients on that when you could be pushing your pups. Like over here. That guy, that'll be next season's fruit. I will eat those next season or these. Um, and we'll see where these two land. One of them is going to try and fruit. As soon as I take this fruit down now, all this energy has been going into this plant. 
So now instead of this one stealing it all, now this one takes over. So this one's going to boom, and you'll notice that when you remove the fruit, the rest of the clump explodes with a lot of growth. So this gets all the way cut down. And then we just use it as mulch. It goes right back on the pile. Because what's better to grow a banana plant off of than a banana plant? It has uh, it's already gathered up all the nutrients it needs out of the soil to build this and to make fruit. So in my mind, there's nothing better to mulch it with than itself. So it all gets pushed back in. Leave it to rot. Um, I know some people that would be very interested in that, so uh, a little bit small, but I think they still do some wonderful things with these banana flowers. Uh, my Filipino friends at uh, Kaya, who are, have a restaurant coming up that's about to open, and they were talking about doing some really beautiful things with these banana flowers, so we'll uh, potentially send that over to them. But this is the goal, this is what everyone's trying to get to. Big beautiful bananas, I guess while we're here, we probably should. How about this? Monkeys open bananas from this side, not this side. This is an American thing. This is nature. That's Orinoco, that's about as good as it will ever get. It's a softer flesh banana, uh, still delicious. Mmm. Want some banana honey? Here it comes. Yeah, it's a lot of banana, and this is actually, um, the fruits are smaller than they usually are on this rack. We've had some really, really massive ones. But um, it's a softer banana, flavor's great, um, awesome cooking banana. Like, you can treat this like a sweet plantain and fry them, and they're just amazing. So, is there anything else I didn't cover that you could think of? I think I got it all. So never take your fruit down until you see some color. Make sure your trees have a good bunch of leaves. They're actually not trees, they're plants. They're herbaceous plants. And believe it or not, this is not considered a fruit. It's called a berry. Bananas are berries. Who knew? Um, this is all trial and error. I'm not an expert. I'm not an authority. I've just done it a bunch, and this is how I've been successful. This is what we've done, and we eat a lot of bananas. We grow a lot of bananas. Uh, we feed a lot of the leaves to the rabbits. There's there's so much to do with bananas. They're a good tool in developing the food forest. Um, you can use them, since they grow so fast, create such a nice little uh, dome over top of stuff. You can grow some bananas in place and put these younger, tender trees underneath them, and it creates a little mini microclimate. And then when the tree has taken over, then you can dig the bananas out and let the tree take that spot. So it's a very useful tool, very mobile, it's a rhizome, grows very much like ginger um, and bamboo, uh, clumping bamboos. They all grow the same. It's a very slow expansion underground. The plant is underground. The above ground growth means nothing. It's like a fingernail. It, there's, there's no, uh, you're not going to damage a banana by cutting it off. We have a whole bunch that um, snapped and broke and stuff in the hurricane that we just shaved them off right at the top and they already have a couple leaves on them sticking up and looking good. So. I hope I got it all, and I hope I can help someone get to that. Um, until the next one, like, subscribe, share, comment, all those things.